What is going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Locks DFS NBA Breakdown. My name is Adi Narang. I'm from LocksDFS.com, and I'm going to be breaking down this Friday main slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Um, looking like a good slate. We got some injury concerns to look into, so we'll break those down a little bit. Going to open up some pretty obvious value, but also some uh, just based on who the guys who are injured are and, and what teams they play for. Maybe some interesting routes we can take based off of those injuries. Uh, so we'll get into that. Before before I do, though, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so right here, at Really Addy. Um, and if you want to get with LocksDFS.com, obviously you know I'm from LocksDFS.com, where we provide NBA NFL content. All you got to do is head over to the website. It's in my Twitter bio, LocksDFS.com. Uh, get yourself a month pass, season pass, whatever suits your budget, um, and come join us. I mean, we've had an awesome start to NBA season. Uh, football's been rolling, as anyone can attest to. Uh, that's part of Locks. Uh, it's a real fun time. You know, the community is growing. It's already grown significantly since basketball started. Um, and it's just it's just super fun to be a part of. We've already had members take down tournaments uh, on the first day. So real fun, uh, good community forming over here. We'd love to have you guys be a part of it if you so choose. Uh, yesterday was an interesting slate, man. Like I, uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't have a great team going into this night game. I had, uh, I had to make some pivots. I didn't have Russell. I didn't have Kawhi. I didn't have Zubac. I had uh beverly steph and Montrez harrell but after eric gordon only put up like five fantasy points or three fantasy points in the second half of this uh, milwaukee game had to make some pivots based on the teams that were above me and who i projected them to have i knew steph would be popular i knew the best the best direct pivot off of him would be Kawhi leonard um just because if Kawhi does well uh, they could blow this game open. Steph could sit on the bench. That is what happened. And then the best pivot off Montrez Harrow for me was Zubac. I, not direct pivot, but a nice little hedge. Uh, just primarily because if uh, if the starters do perform well, it will keep those guys off the bench. The fact that Zubac is a big guy, Harrell's a big guy, could directly eat into his minutes. Um, and then D'Angelo Russell, the other off of Steph pivot, if he does well, Steph might get slightly lower usage. Um, you know, Steph was an awesome play. It's unfortunate he busted. Uh, definitely ran good getting you know top two top five percent outcomes from these two guys Kawhi only played 21 minutes put up 41 fantasy points Zubas only played 17 minutes put up 35 fantasy points so definitely ran good here but regardless happy to start NBA uh 2-0 and um and happy a lot of the members started the same way so with that being said let's jump into this slate um, I, I really appreciate you guys leaving all those comments. Um, as you know, we run that same giveaway. All you got to do is leave a like, leave a comment, make sure you subscribe, and you'll be entered into winning a free season pass of your choice. We announced the winner to that every Thursday Night Football Showdown video, so we announced the winner to that just a, a couple videos ago. If you haven't already checked that out, make sure you go check that out. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate all your guys' comments. Uh, I asked you guys what you want to see these video, uh, how you want to see these videos broken down. And most of you guys said position by position, uh, highlighting some of the mispriced players. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, and starting at point guard, it kind of brings me to my favorite player of this entire slate. Um, at least my favorite high price player of this entire slate. And that's going to be Luka Doncic. Uh, we saw Luka Doncic have a massive, massive usage rate in preseason. It was like 35%. Um, didn't know exactly how that would carry over into the regular season. Figured it would be fairly high, but... Um, First game, the returns look pretty good. He had a 36.8% usage rate, and he's got the Pelicans matchup. The Pelicans matchup um, all season is going to be, you know, one of the most fantasy-friendly spots. They're not going to come with a lot of defense. Um, you know, they have they have good defenders on their team. Lonzo Ball is not a bad defender. Drew Holiday is not a bad defender by any means. I mean, he's, you know, one of the league's most elite defenders. But it just pace sort of overcomes all, all sorts of those situations. Um, and so, you know, the Mavericks playing in such a pace up spot versus the Pelicans who project to lead the entire league in pace. Um, anytime I can get Luka Doncic at a fairly underpriced 9,200, um, I mean, he smashed this, uh, similar price tag in, the, in his first game versus Washington, uh, dropping like 34 points, nine rebounds. I just think this is a pretty easy five X spot for him with upside for more. Um, especially if he's going to maintain those sort of ridiculous usage rate numbers, like 36, 37 percent. It's going to give him quite a few James Harden-esque stat lines from last year. Um, and at 9,200, you know, James Harden used to live in the 11K range. And I think it's not long before we see Luka Doncic sort of um, climb his way into that salary tier. So definitely interested in him at the point guard position and as my favorite high uh, high-priced um, DFS player. 
So that being said, let's move on to shooting guard. Shooting guard is a little bit interesting. A guy I mentioned in the first video that I made who didn't really perform too much was CJ McCollum. Uh, he was 6,500 uh, home to Denver, and I like that spot because it's just uh, historically that's fairly a, a fairly low salary point for him. I mean, he typically lives in the 6,900 to $7,300 price range, or at least that's where he was for the majority of last year. So seeing him at 6,500 was a little bit cheaper than usual. Um, he didn't perform. I, I think there, we still have some uh, things to see based on how the additions of Rodney Hood and Hassan Whiteside into that starting lineup affect his usage rate. Um, but he really just shot the ball super poorly in that game. So if he were to shoot, you know, a little bit better, I think he, he at least meets value with a little 5x um, and potential for obviously much more in the spot versus Sacramento. Huge pace up spot. Sacramento allowing some of the worst three point shooting percentage uh, to their opposition last year. Um, and they're going to be missing a couple guys who, uh, you know, um, are beneficial to their defense, like Buddy Heald, Marvin Bagley. So I'm interested in CJ McCollum here at 6,200. But scrolling down a little bit more, I did mention we saw Buddy Heald uh, twist his ankle on DeAndre Ayton's foot last game. He stayed in to finish the game, but he missed practice. Um, and he's looking pretty, pretty questionable for this one. Um, it is the night game, so we may not have a confirmation on this um up until tip off so the plays that i'm about to recommend I, I do recommend you keep them make sure you keep them in your guard forward and utility spot um so you have some viable pivots uh obviously we might get the game before we might get the news before the denver game tips off so you have some viable pivots there um like gary harris or you can go to the utah lakers game and there's going to be some viable pivots in that one as well but the guys that I'm talking about, Boyan Bogdanovich, or, or Bogdan Bogdanovich, he is 4,600 on DraftKings. Um, he, you know, last year, whenever Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley were out and he was on the court, he would see, um, oh, I took Harry Giles off the court in his career as well. But he had a usage rate just under 26. Uh, he led him in minutes. He averaged over... Um, 1.1 fantasy points per minute and so if you project him at you know anything about 30 minutes maybe slightly more um you know you're, you're, he's smashing by your 4.6k so if buddy healed is out uh, we already know marvin bag is going to be out with the fractured thumb if uh if buddy healed is out as well he sort of just becomes a lock into your lineups uh makes a ton of sense at this price point um but you know just make sure you have some pivots ready he's not a, he's not a horrible play on his own um, because even with Bagley out, uh, Bagley and Bogdanovich actually rotated fairly, like every time Bagley checked out, Bogdanovich checked in until the second half where Rashawn Holmes, uh, was the direct backup to Bagley, but that was only for the third quarter. Uh, and then Bogdanovich came back in in the fourth until they put all their, uh, all their, you know, bench, bench in, in a big blowout. Um, so he's not a, he's not a bad play even with just Bagley out. So I'm not necessarily lining up pivots for him. It's mainly for the other guys that I'll get into in this video. But before I do that, let's jump over to small forward. Small forward, interesting position. I think two guys that struck me as a little bit underpriced the minute I looked at this lineup or at this uh, tier was Kelly Oubre and Torian Prince. Um, I guess the theme of those two guys is undersized guys playing the four that are going to boost their uh, overall rebounding numbers. We saw Torian Prince play 41 minutes Um Last game, obviously, five of those minutes came in overtime, but still 36 minutes in regulation. Uh, for Kenny Atkinson, who typically doesn't run his starters uh, too many minutes, that was pretty encouraging to see. And he played really well, um, rewarding him with like 15 points, 10 rebounds. The 10 rebounds is really key uh, because, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for under, undersized guys playing the four. Under, these guys are, you know, you already know Kelly Oubre and Torian Prince are going to be excessively active um, offensively. Uh, they're going to get defensive stats. They're going to get you the uh, blocks, the steals that you need. They're going to score points. They're going to get the occasional assists. But when you can add a rebounding floor to these guys as well, which you do when, when they play the four, like that Pascal Siakam versus New Orleans situation, undersized guys that play in positions that are uh, relied upon to rebound, typically you just boost their rebounding floor by a good chunk. Kelly Oubre almost exclusively played the four. Um, or excuse me, Torian Prince almost exclusively played the four, subbing in and out with Rodion Kourouks. Um, and Kelly Oubre spent a lot of his time at the four, and I think he might spend even more time at the four with DeAndre Ayton out if they do go small and run, you know, Kaminsky or Saric at the five. Um, I could definitely see Oubre spending more time at the four, and in a pace-up spot versus Denver, um, or it's not a pace-up spot, actually, but it's a high-pace spot versus Denver, 
he makes sense. And then Torian Prince, I mean, the Nets have the highest team total in the on the slate right now at 118. Uh, he makes a ton of sense if he's going to see 36 minutes uh, with that rebounding floor versus a Knicks team that's just going to struggle to defend anyone this year. Um, he does make a lot of sense to me as well. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit farther, there is some good value uh, in this small forward position. You may not need it with the rest of the value on the slate, but Rodney Hood played 31 minutes last game, uh, started started the game, was in the starting lineup. May hurt his usage rate, usage rate a little bit, but even with that being said, 3,800 at a pace-up spot, uh, playing 31 minutes, you know, so I see a hard time, or I have a hard time envisioning him not getting there. And then Josh Hart, he's a guy who we saw, if you want to run back that Luka Doncic pick with someone else, someone maybe a little bit contrarian and cheaper. We saw Josh Hart uh, get 28 minutes off the bench for the Pelicans uh, versus Toronto. He's sort of a guy that can, you know, defend multiple positions. He rebounds well. He scores the ball. Um, so he's just a guy that's going to carve out a good, solid chunk of minutes for himself. He played the third most minutes on the Pelicans. Um, we saw Lonzo Ball sit in the uh, in the fourth quarter in favor of Josh Hart. He came back in overtime, but down the stretch, we saw Josh Hart out there for majority of the game, uh, and he put up a massive score. You needed him to bank a GPP uh, on the opening slate, um, and his price didn't move at all. So if he gets 28 minutes again, I think he's an interesting value play for sure. And speaking of value plays, moving on to power forward, Nemanja Bihalica is the other guy I wanted to talk about. Um, he sees, obviously, a usage rate increase with Marvin Bagley and Buddy Heald out as well. Averages just over a fantasy point per minute. Um, and if you project him anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes uh, in the absence of those two players, uh, he, you know, he smashes 3,600, almost 7x with upside for more. Um, so fairly easy, fairly safe projection that, remember, I would keep him in your power forward uh, utility spot. Maybe not for uh, directly pivoting off of him to another player in another game, but you know, you want to see how the starting lineup comes out, and we're not going to get it until the slate locks. We could see a guy like Trevor Ariza start, um, which, you know, I would obviously then prefer Trevor Ariza. We could see a guy like Rashawn Holmes start, which would then make Rashawn Holmes much more interesting. Um, so, you know, keep an eye on the situation, but just know that if Marvin Bagley or if Marvin Bagley's out, if Buddy Heal sits as well, it's going to open up a ton of value for these Kings players, and it's going to already boost some of their um, already fairly high projections like De'Aaron Fox. Um, obviously you saw he had an over 27% usage rate when Heald and Bagley sat last year. Um, and in this high pay spot versus Portland, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna underperform two games in a row. He's gonna, he's gonna get right. And this is a good spot for him to get right. Um, at low, at what projects to be fairly low on the ship because he did burn a few people, um, last game. So with that being said, let's move on to center. Center is deep today. Um, as it was, uh, last slate as well. Uh, I don't think jamming Carl Anthony Towns is a bad move by any means versus the Charlotte defense. I mean, this guy, you know, 29% usage rate game one. He just looked, he just looked good. I mean, he, the, the, all the, all the, uh, reports out of training camp for how much he's improved his defensive, uh, abilities. And, and that sort of came to fruition. He, he was blocking shots, getting steals. He looked awesome in that matchup versus Brooklyn. Um, and I don't think his price is def it, it's up there, but it's not correct yet. I think he's got to go above 11K, um, you know, with his role in Minnesota. So love, uh, I don't mind jamming him in. You can go with a guy like Jokic, you know, Phoenix was dead last in the league um, in rebounding percentage and opponent points in the paint allowed last season. Those fit right into Jokic's hand. May, may run into a blowout situation here, but we obviously know he could get there uh, in three quarters worth of time. I mean, he put up like 20 and like 12 or something in a first Portland and basically the fourth quarter. So he doesn't need a lot of minutes to get there, but the guy I'm interested in, um, and I already touched on this game a little bit is this Portland Sacramento game, Hassan Whiteside. Um, you know, he, he played 26 minutes for Portland. I think we could see that go up a little bit if he continues to play so well, um, Port, uh, Sacramento will be starting Dwayne Dedman. Um, and they will be, even without Marvin Bagley, they will be fairly big again. Um, you know, keep an eye on this. If Trevor Reza starts and you have the inclination that Sacramento may go small, it definitely hurts us on white side. But if a guy like Bihalitsa or Rashawn Holmes starts alongside Dwayne Dedman, uh, they're going to need Hassan Whiteside's size out there. So that definitely helps him. But Sacramento, uh, bottom five in opponent uh, rebounding percentage last year, one of the highest paced teams in the league. They were seventh overall in pace in the preseason. Um, and uh, I believe that Phoenix-Sacramento game put him at like 5th or 6th in a one-game sample size in 2019. 
So, uh, you know, good spot for a guy like Hassan Whiteside. He just racked up a bunch of rebounds. He played 26 minutes and had like 16 uh, points, 19 rebounds, two blocks. There's a lot of upside here at 7,200. Um, I think we see his price slowly come up a little bit um, as the season goes on. So I like that play here at center um, today on DraftKings. So with that all being said, guys, I try to keep this video a little bit quicker, but we still extended past 15 minutes. So if you did make it this far, I appreciate it. Um, please do leave a like, leave a comment. You'll be entered into winning a free season pass of your choice, which is always a good, uh, always a good deal. We love to add people to this community, and it's just our way of giving back to y'all. Uh, for helping us with the comments and you know boosting us in the youtube algorithm so thank you guys so much for checking out this video uh christian will have uh the video for tomorrow and i will see y'all later peace